Todd. I'm Stephen Blaine, your host with White Labs, an e-commerce marketing agency. Uh, today's guest is Sadia. Sadia, feel, Hi, feel free to let our viewers know about your about yourself and your journey. Sure. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me on your uh, podcast, Stephen. I'm very excited to connect uh, with all your uh, listeners. I'm Sadia Sharmin. I'm um, the founder of a platform, new platform that's launching in Q2 Style V, and also a founder of a brand, Cottonly. I'm originally from Bangladesh, and I came to the U.S. a few decades ago now uh, for college, and um, I did my undergrad in computer science from Mount Holyoke College, where I, um, and then following the graduation, I, um, I started in the tech industry, actually. So I um, was at Microsoft for eight years, and in a time where there were few women in the software development area, so despite and although it was challenging, it was also a rewarding experience where, you know, coming right out of college, I was developing software that was being used by literally billions of people. Um, and then I decided to do my MBA. I left Microsoft and, um, and after my MBA, I ventured into many roles, also staying close to the technology side. Uh, at IBM, Salesforce, Microsoft, and also at high growth startups. And uh, throughout my career, the one thing that, you know, I was very passionate about was building products and streamlining complex problems that, um, and, 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 you know, creating solutions for uh, users um, in the process to make their lives easier. And my foray into the fashion industry began a couple of years ago during the COVID pandemic. When I launched my sustainable children's clothing brand, Cotton Leap, and I noticed a gap in the market for uh, sustainable options for children, and I leveraged my connections in Bangladesh, where I had a large network of friends and family involved in the garment sector. Bangladesh is the second largest garments manufacturing country in the world, um, and uh, so I, was, I had a lot of help, I would say, as I launched my brand. But in the process, I also noticed... Um, um, supply chain side of production, the manufacturing, and of launching a brand as a single founder was extremely challenging. So along the journey of launching my brand and meeting countless other creators who were very passionate, who were so passionate, and they launched their own brands inspired by their unique life stories. And despite all these challenges and hurdles that I mentioned, and for some of them I met, it took them five years to launch their brand, their, their products. And I recognized that, you know, if I could make that process a bit easier, uh, then it would enable so many more creators to realize their dreams, um, so to speak. Awesome. So that's, that's when I started to think of building a platform uh, for enabling creators, which is Style V. Awesome. Who, who's, who's your target audience and, and what does your platform bring to emerging brands? Yeah, so, you know, as I mentioned, like launching my own brand, Cottonly, it opened my eyes to the myriad of challenges faced by the emerging brands, especially from grappling with the archaic and pen and paper supply chains to contending with the daunting minimum order quantities, which are designed mainly for the larger brands. And, you know, the, the obstacles just seemed so endless. However, like the primary struggle that, that resonated deeply with me and with other creators um, was the issue of cash flow. So emerging brands often lack like the historical and market data um, and they don't know like, you know, what styles are going to do well and what which ones are not and, you know, what quantities they should produce, what sizes they should produce. And there's so much uncertainty and that threatened their very survival for some of these businesses, right? So without the pre-production validation of demand, but as far, for, for, they are tying up valuable cash in maybe excess inventory, or sometimes they're missing out on potential sales opportunities. So uh, with Style V, we set out to revolutionize the fashion industry by addressing these particular challenges first. Uh, our platform serves as a launch pad for brands, putting them with the tools to validate the market, to raise pre-production capital, and um, to through pre-sales, and then to produce with, uh, to, to um, embark on their journey with more confidence, essentially. So they can leverage our platforms not only to gain access to a pool of lifetime customers who resonate with their brand values, but of early adopters, but also to continue to engage with them 
uh, even after the launch for the new launches to to get their feedback. Sure. Is your um, platform different from the others that are already in the marketplaces? Yeah. So, so at Style Beat, so we understand that you know today's fashion enthusiasts are seeking more than just trendy pieces. They crave unique and sustainable fashion options that resonate with their values. People are getting more aware of the like the effect of fashion on both the environment, on, you know, there's the ethical side of production. So all of these are becoming more and more important. And we recognize that emerging brands need to differentiate themselves in a crowded space and connect with, be able to connect with like-minded customers through their compelling storytelling. So one of the key values that Style V brings to emerging brands is our commitment to showcasing uh, not only the creations of these uh, brands, but also the unique story behind the uh, the founders and the brands. So making it very transparent, their whole like production process, or their you know what what if they're supporting certain causes. So what is the value? What is the unique story behind every brand? We really highlight that through the platform, so that our customers can authentically connect with them. Um, and and create like lifelong partnerships. Uh, and also um, another aspect that sets us apart is our comprehensive um, pre-order capabilities, where we are really empowering both new and existing brands to market test their new lines. So we have like pre-order capabilities where brands can, let's say, know they're going to produce certain items and they can launch a pre-order campaign where they're just... Um, um, like, you know, getting pre-orders for those, uh, those products before they actually produce, validating demand and also getting pre-production capital. Or they could say that, similar to Kickstarter, actually, where they could say, you know, I don't know if I'm uh, going to produce this style, but I want to validate the market and I'll only produce it if I get 100 or 200 orders of this item. So uh, okay. we put a hold on the card of the customers uh, um, and we only charge them if the creator reaches their minimum goal. So there's like, there's also limited edition uh, options where they might say, you know, this is a very special thing. I'm only going to produce like hundred of these and not no more of the, and, and this is a special opportunity for the customers to get something, you know, that they, that's, that's one of a kind. Awesome. What are some challenges that you've faced in this journey and how did you overcome them? I'm sure there's been a lot. Yeah, I yeah, know. I mean, of course, like uh, the first challenge was to making investors believe that this is an idea that uh, would resonate. Like it's really what we're doing is changing the way fashion goes to market. So it's a very innovative concept, right? So rather than and changing consumer behavior also where, you know, uh, instead of impulse buys driven by big sales, they are making very um, like, you know, conscious purchases, something that they re that resonates with them and that they're going to use, right? So it's a change on both sides, on both the way that the fashion is going to market and also how consumers are getting it. So that's one big hurdle. The second hurdle is, you know, when we, when I started off, there's just so many challenges that needs to be solved, like for emerging brands, like there's the uh, cash flow issue, but there's also that offline supply chain. So initially I was like, uh, starting with the supply chain side, but that's going to take more time. So like to create a production in a box environment uh, is, was, is another goal of the platform eventually. So, so we had to change a little bit to start with the marketplace first and then work on the supply chain. So yeah. By step, right? <laughs> yes. It's always uh, pivoting in, in, in uh, when you're launching a startup. Yeah. Uh, it's very important. Awesome. Discuss the impact of sustainability on the fashion industry and how Style V addresses, you know, environmental yeah. concerns. Yeah. And, you know, like I knew about that there's about overproduction and all that, but until I got into the actual launching my brand Cottonly and talking to all the other brands and really looking into it, it's mind blowing the, the effect that, you know, the, what the challenges that we faced in sustainability with, with fashion right so the fashion industry you may um or you know it uh it, it uh, you may know this but uh it's a we produce a staggering 150 billion garments annually wow. it's enough to supply 20 pieces of clothing to every person on earth wow. and uh shockingly like 30 to 40 percent of this production is expected never to be sold 
the overproduction only creates a lose-lose situation for everyone involved. So let me give you an example. Like, you know, for example, for the brand side, on the brand side, they are uh, like more than half of the garments, they are expected to be eventually marked down by a third or close to cost, leading to diminished brand reputation, eroded margins, diluted exclusivity of brands. You know, things that especially are very important to small brands is, is the exclusivity, is, you know, the ability to, uh, to to survive. They can't have 50% sold at cost, right? Um, and this unsold inventory keeps accumulating. So, so this is, you know, not good for the brands to survive. On the customer side, while customers are mesmerized temporarily by the um, the large sale prices and, you know, the inexpensivity of, of trendy clothes, often like they end up buying things that they never use or wear. So there's buyer's remorse on the customer side, but the biggest impact of all is on the environment, you know, with overproduction contributing to waste and pollution. So in a world where apparel production has doubled in the last 15 years, thanks to fast fashion, the actual usage has actually plummeted by 36%. When, and this is not a sustainable cycle. So that's what Style V is trying to really address. Uh, so emerging as a transformative solution where we are really aiming to disrupt the overproduction cycle through uh, innovative measures such as pre-sale, a transparent supply chain, where we are empowering brands to align production with actual demand and thereby mitigating the excess inventory problem. And eventually we hope to eliminate the excess inventory and preserving the reputation and quality of and exclusivity of the brands at the same time. What is Stalvi's future plan in the next few years and even long term? Yeah, that's a that's a great question, you know, because there's so much that we want to do. So Stalvi um, marketplace is just the beginning of our journey to empower the emerging brands, but our vision extends to beyond the traditional marketplace where we aim to create an ecosystem that revolutionizes the entire fashion industry. So our long-term goal is to integrate the marketplace with a production in a box environment and a design studio, providing a comprehensive solution for aspiring entrepreneur where as a launch pad, right? So imagine this, right? So imagine that uh, a platform where anyone, any can come design their products that they've always dreamt of launching, validate the demand using our pre-order capability, raise pre-production capital, even before production starts and then seamlessly produce with our uh, network of factories. So that's the eventual goal. It's a big goal, but mm -hmm. that's what we are here to do. And, you know, it's, a, it's, it's one that truly w we think would empower brands and democratize the fashion industry by making the offline supply chain online and accessible to all. And then we are committed to, to this vision. Dang. Many of our viewers, all of our viewers, our aspiring entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, what advice would you give entrepreneurs looking to enter the fashion industry? Yeah. So, I mean, I think like, um, I would tell entrepreneurs that, um, to not give up on their dreams, there's going to be challenges. But if you think of an example is let's like Shopify, right? Before there was Shopify launching an e-commerce site to sell your products online was a daunting task where, yeah. you know, you had to find developers, designers, and everyone else, and you know, how do you ship and how do you do everything else that to, to manage your orders? So, so that was a pipe dream for a lot of people, mm -hmm. but things now you can launch your web page in a day, right? So there's a lot of efforts happening where, um, to recognizing the power of the creators in the future of our, you know, uh, like of, of, of the economy and the uh, and enabling them so style view is just one platform doing that and there's you know so many resources coming their way so and and the other thing i would um say as an entrepreneur myself that you know before i was working in these large companies where it was a nine to like you know i would i would if i didn't accomplish something or if i did accomplish something it was a good or bad feeling but now it's like a roller coaster ride where it's exhilarating and it's disappointing. And there's all these emotions that are amplified as you are as an entrepreneur, because yeah. it's something that you own. 
but you know the when it it's once you're at the end of the road um and you've accomplished something the i think the the the, the feeling of um the empowerment and of um of accomplishment is just so much um better than a traditional job that you know i think everyone should at least try to be an entrepreneur once in their life that's 100 percent. i'm with you yeah is is there anything that i haven't asked you that uh you'd like our audience to know about any, any of your other initiatives anything that you're doing that um that you'd like to let our audience know uh, yeah, no, I would. So we, the Style V platform is going to be launching in um, end of Q2. And okay. I would love to um, hear from um, brands with a story behind them to um, and, and apply to our platform. So it's a limited 100 brands we're launching with in Q2. And it's a curated brands. But, you know, like I would love to hear and discover more sustainable brands, you know, of impact. Um, and, you know, after June, it's... Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. I, I, I appreciate hearing your story and your your journey here and uh, excited to see the launch. <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. Thanks for having me on your podcast. Thank, thank you so much. Bye.